Hi again, this is Watercolorish, and today we're talking very briefly about masking. People often ask me here and on my Instagram what kind of tape I'm using and how I get those clean, straight edges on my watercolor painting. So keep watching and I'll reveal everything I know, which uh, should only take a minute or two. But first, you may ask, is masking necessary? And the answer is no. But what is important, in my opinion, is to preserve the unpainted white of your paper somewhere in your composition. As an example, here's a watercolor of mine that has some unpainted white highlights next to dark areas, which make the highlights really pop. And here's the same painting with those highlights slightly darkened digitally, and you can see that without those unpainted bits, the whole thing has reduced contrast and has really lost its sparkle compared to the original. Here again. So plan where you want your highlights to be and protect those areas, because once you lose an unpainted highlight, it's really hard to get it back. Now you may be thinking, hey, I've got something called Chinese white in my watercolor paint box, so why not use that for highlights? Well, you can, but here are two reasons why you might not want to. First, watercolor paint is water soluble, so any darker paint that you're working over is probably going to bleed into your Chinese white and make it less white, even if you paint many layers. And you could try slathering it on real thick, but here's the other thing. The pigment in Chinese white is zinc oxide, which is that thick white goop that lifeguards used to smear on their noses when I was a kid. I find it has a slightly greenish brown cast to it, depending on the angle of the light, and it's better than nothing as a last resort, but Chinese white highlights in your painting won't sparkle quite the same way that unpainted paper does. Instead, they'll look like a lifeguard's nose, and nobody wants that. So better to keep those white areas unpainted. You could just paint carefully around them with your brush, which is fine if you're meticulous and careful, but risky if you're working fast over a big area. So one way to protect them is with masking fluid, also called liquid frisket, which dries into a rubbery film, which is super fun to peel off later with your fingers. It's most useful for protecting small areas that have round, irregular shapes. Like, I used it to mask all the raindrops on glass in this watercolor before painting the background, but it's not that good for masking areas that have straight edges or long, gentle curves or sharp corners because the liquid has surface tension that tends to pull it into kind of a blob shape, and blobs generally don't have straight edges or sharp corners. Also be aware that masking fluid will ruin a paintbrush quickly, so you'd use a cheap brush to apply it, or better yet, get a tool with a rubber nib like this one that you can easily clean with a dull knife or your fingernail. But the main reason I rarely use masking fluid is because it has a short shelf life. Whenever I get around to kneading it, I find that it's all dried up in the bottle and I need to buy it again. So I've just gotten used to doing without it. For all those reasons, I much prefer drafting tape for masking. Drafting tape looks like masking tape, but it's less sticky so that it won't damage your paper when you peel it off. The first thing I do when starting a new painting is to lightly draw a rectangle that will be the boundary of the painted area. I trace the inside of a pre-cut mat to do this quickly and easily. Then I put long pieces of drafting tape along the outside edges of that rectangle, making sure to press down the seams where pieces overlap with my fingernail to close any air gaps that might otherwise allow leakage. This tape creates a nice clean white border when my painting is finished, and pulling off all that masking at the end is seriously like a magic trick. I also mask foreground areas carefully with drafting tape before painting a dark background. And the reason for doing a dark background last is that otherwise the dark paint can bleed into a lighter area if you just touch it with your wet brush. So when my foreground has reached a nearly finished state, I completely mask its edges with drafting tape. You don't have to mask it exactly. For complex forms, you can mask a simpler shape that's a little larger than the area you're trying to protect. For large areas, cut a piece of cardstock or similar thick paper slightly smaller than the area to be covered and tape that down. Again, use your fingernail to press down the tape wherever it overlaps any other tape to get rid of any air gaps. And do not use masking tape or white artist tape for watercolor masking because they are both too sticky and will definitely damage your paper. Drafting tape is much less sticky by design. But sometimes the tape quality and stickiness will vary, even in a brand of tape you've used before. If it sticks too much, it may remove a little paint, or your paper might look a little fuzzy when you peel it off. 
And if it sticks too little, you might get some leakage under the tape. So always test a new tape roll on a piece of scrap paper before using it in your art. One of my favorite parts of the watercolor process is peeling off the masking. It's a moment when the look of a painting changes so suddenly, like magic. I really hope you enjoy it as much as I do. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching Watercolorish, and I hope you'll subscribe if you want to see more little watercolor tips coming soon.